Hello, this is the Sharing Rail podcast, uh, episode four. Um, I'm here alone today. I'm um, going to interview myself. No, I'm only kidding. I'm going to read you some poems uh, from my book, Long Hill. Um, the cover was done by Karen Shea of Karen Shea Design here in Beverly. If you're ever interested in getting a, a book design, Karen's excellent. She would probably do it maybe better than a publisher, in my opinion. Um, so these poems have, uh, some have some uh, indigenous themes. Uh, I don't represent the tribe or anything like that. Uh, they just, poems come and I write them. So um, the first poem is Diver of Poems. Diver of poems. <clears throat> I'm a diver for poems, my lungs large, filled with oxygen, diving, diving between the words, the words that rest upon this page, diving into the watery depths of consciousness, through the blue-green waters of liquid light, searching for a word that I can bring back up to the page. The harvest is always uncertain in these shifting currents of feeling and emotion cisterns of words lie untouched, lying among half-buried statues and shipwrecks so perfectly preserved, delivered from the storms that once raged from above. These words, when found, must be handled with love and care, cradled to the heart, with cupped hands brought to the surface for you to see. The next poem is called The Melting Has Begun. Oh, the melting has begun. Those frozen beliefs that cast their cold and cruel shadow over the beating heart. They stood like glaciers, reigned like kings, blocking out the light of the sun, convincing you there was no such thing as love. But the melting has begun. It's impossible to stop these glaciers melting into the open arms of the sea, no longer able to cast their cold and cruel shadow across your beating heart, because the melting has begun, and all that is left is love. Next poem is The Garden of Future's Memory. And a lot of these were inspired, in, in part, from Long Hill. Uh, walking up there um, a lot. Um, yeah, great place. I encourage people to visit there. In the garden of future's memory, I'm planting the seeds of peace, row upon row, until they reach the sea where the humpbacks breach and the sun shines through the clouds like the face of a prophet. In the garden of future's memory, I'm planting seeds of love, row upon row, as far as the mind can see, nourishing the atmosphere of breath and the climate of the heart. In the garden of future's memory, I'm working the soil of imagination for the great harvest of tomorrow, and peace and love will be at our table. In the next poem, is the arithmetic of the divine. <clears throat> I spent a lot of time in coffee shops. This is a coffee shop song, um, poem. In this coffee shop of heretics, artists, and revolutionaries, with hammered copper, copper tables and wooden floor, and the breath of conversation rises and falls, talk of da Vinci's proportion of man, the distance of the palm measured by four fingers, Four palms reveal the length of a foot. Eight heads, the height of the human body. And in this coffee shop, the lungs expand like the wings of an angel. And the, ce and the cells, like stained glass windows, receive the light of the sun, illuminating the church of the flesh. And the hymn of conversation rises and falls, while the arithmetic of the divine echoes through the centuries, through the mouths of heretics through the hands of artists, and through the heart of the revolutionary. 
and the next one is called New Story. Beneath, excuse me, between the two eclipses, somewhere around the full moon, the words flew from the pages of my book. They flew up into the sky, joining other words that had flown from the pages of books from all around the world. They flew like locusts, freed from the Bibles and official text. They flew from the libraries and schools and history books that skipped the story of the indigenous and of the oppressed. And when the morning came, black swarms of words were received by the sun and were no more. And now only blank pages, void of conclusions and interpretations, void of justifications and judgments, all gone, only blank pages that now summon a future free of the past so a new story can be told. And the next poem is the letter O. <clears throat> Do the angels fly up through the letter O between the lines within the margins of past and future, flying up through the divine pool of the letter O, carrying words captured by the pen that skates across the page, delivering this small harvest of words gathered from the fields of the soul in the form of a poem, this lettered rose delivered by the angels of words from the libraries of the unknown carried through the letter O. Uh, this one's called Spiral Staircase. I heard they found a secret chamber in Egypt, deep inside Giza. On the wall, they were hieroglyphics. It was the history of the world. At night, I like to look up at the sky, wander the beach, feel the pull of the tide. They say the pyramids were built around a spiral staircase, inner then outer, spinning towards Orion. I ex excavated my heart once, had to dig through the dirt, crawl down a tunnel, break through a wall. I stood in the chamber of the heart, read the hieroglyphics on the wall, and like Orion's child, walked the spiral staircase of the soul. This one's called uh, Houdini. Disengaging from the energy of the past, the old energy that runs through history, that runs through the schools and churches, this old energy that has chased you through countless incarnations, hunted, hanged, and pursued for the light in your eye, for your unfettered connection to God. You died in the streets of Rome. You died in the alleys of Fatima. You died in the bloody battles of history, fighting the wars of disconnection. Now released from the karma of the past, this old energy no longer flows through you, cleansed like the bird once covered in oil. And like Houdini, hanging from his feet, you release yourself from the straight jacket of doubt and fear, of darkness and shadow, and embrace the new energy, vibrant, pulsing, and free. And this poem is uh, called Sigil. A, a, a sigil is a, um, is a magical symbol. I don't know if you can um, see, but Karen also helped me with, uh, Karen Shea, who I mentioned earlier, with the, the graphics in this. It's just really, really cool. This is like the the beech tree out in front of the, the house at uh, Long, Long Hill, or very similar to it. Sigil, squaring the circle between you and God, like Leonardo and the Vitruvian man. Drop the rope ladder from the loft of the mine, climb down to the garden of the heart with its sigil and concentric circles. Stand among the flowers and sink your heartbeat with the heart of the earth let it beat for you and you for her, and call forth the subtle winds of intuition so you may square the circle between you and God and enter the new Jerusalem. This is very much a, a long hill poem here, a garden of verse. <clears throat> they, they have like a garden at Long Hill that's made out of a, a fence out of sticks, like a square garden, and the fencing is made out of like limbs so, very, very cool. Um, 
and the, the volunteers do a great, great job there. And um, I think it's Dan is the the arborist. Uh, he's he's amazing. Garden averse, at the garden's edge, bending at waist, with forward weight shifting to toes, and my nose inside the petals of the flower, breathing in the fragrance of angels, which is received by the heart and lung, and broadcasted like sunlight to tissue and cells, and the buzz of the bees gathering pollen and nectar for the hive of the soul, so its honey may drip into the mouths of the awakened, so they may taste the divine and smell the scent of angels whose fragrance fills my heart and lung like a ser sermon of sunlight broadcasted to tissue and cell, to pen, to page, and these words like flowers sit in the garden of verse for you to lean forward with your nose between the petals of the works. Hanging poems in April. I'm hanging poems in April, the one, ones I wrote in winter with the embers of yesterday, written with stick and ash on the bark of the silver birch. I'm hanging poems in April, going to hang one for the politician, going to hang one for the judge and priest. I'm going to drive to their homes, I'm going to hang it above their doors, a poem about the buffalo charging down their hallowed halls, knocking over statues, clearing out Wall Street, tipping over their laws, and there's nothing they can do about it. The poem is written, the vision is complete, written on the bark of the silver birch with stick and ash. This one's called The Margins. The wooden desks are arranged like tanks, poised for battle. The teacher parrots the history of the conqueror and warns of a quiz in order to cement the lie. The blackboard as dense as the curriculum that pours forth like hot tar onto the memory in the land of the oppressed. I too pour myself like liquid ink onto the open page of the official text and move between the sentences with palms beneath the letters, shimmying between words towards the margins of the page where the stories of the ancestors are told. Here on the edges of the text, I hear a beating drum, the smell of burning wood where white buffalo calf woman tells the story of her people, the Lakota, who live on the margin on the reservation, away from the lies written on history's page, away from the experts and footnotes, away from the distinguished pictures of politicians and generals who hide their trigger finger inside their coats, and white buffalo calf woman tells the story of the return of the buffalo who charge across fields of memory over the shallow graves of the fallen and onto the open page of the human heart. And uh, there was a, there's a prophecy that came from her um, white buffalo calf woman uh, who's revered in the L Lakota uh, about uh, the birth of a, like, it's either a white calf or a, a white buffalo. And that happened in July, which fulfills one of their prophecies, which is really interesting. Um, this poem is called Stories of the Earth. Um, and, and again, I don't speak for the Lakota or any, any tribe. I just write poems. Stories of the Earth. My mother is a tree, a great tree. Her branches spread out over me, a canopy, an umbrella of love and safety, safe from the watchful eye of the fox who trots alongside the edges of dreams. My mother tells the stories of the earth, stories that she absorbs from her roots. And the ancestors sit upon her limbs, generation above generation. Mother tells stories of the buffalo and the rainbow people. She tells stories of the river that spoke and the sky that wept. And as she tells her stories, the wind moves through her limbs and from the woods 
The fox moves closer and crouches in the field, while mother tells the story of Sister Lightning, who lives in the sky above. And while she speaks, the wind becomes fierce like a warrior, and the sky darkens with the smell of rain. And the ancestors grab hold of limb, and from the sky, Sister Lightning comes crashing down onto the field. The ancestors jump, mother smiles, and the fox leaves with burning tail. Um, the vine of now. Each thought like a leaf appearing on the vine of now, attached to the wall of reality, rooted in the soil of today, spiraling, growing upwards towards the sunlight, reaching for the divine. And this would be my last one. It's called The Great Unknown. I'm juxtaposing like hiking in the woods, like on a path, and also being in the library and, the, and like walking within the, like the book stacks at the library. Also a big fan of the Beverly Public Library. Um, the Great Unknown. Hiking through woods, walking through libraries, hands outstretched, touching leaves, feeling books, listening to birds, breathing words, woodpecker typing, God's code, when I awaken, my heart told me which way to go. The book on the shelf is called The Great Unknown, so deeper into the woods I go. Thank you very much. I appreciate you listening. And um, again, Karen Shea of uh, Karen, uh, Karen Shea Design, and the book is Long Hill. And uh, yeah, share. If you like the poem, share it with a friend, please. And this is the sharing wheel, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>